Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. As I started discussion on personal identity and this is the third lecture on this topic. And the contents of today's talk will be, I will be talking about trace evidence. And in this we will try to learn what is trace evidence and what are various types of trace evidence and what is the significance of trace, import, uh, trace evidence or medical legal importance and which is the principle which govern, which is the low card exchange principle and what does this convey. Now starting with the topic trace evidence, as we know trace means to seek, to work or any tiny amount or residue of something. And evidence mean which we observe or which we witness by our all five senses, sight, hearing, touch. So all the five senses they are applied to gather that evidence. So trace evidence is the best described as any small piece of evidence that has to be collected and it places a suspect it creates a suspect at the scene of crime or at the place of the incident. So what conveys the contact trace evidence that means it can be defined as the physical evidence left at the scene of crime or exchange between the assailant and the victim when they come in contact with each other. It also means any leftover material at the scene of crime on the body of the victim or the assailant or anything left over which acts as an evidence and tells about the telltale. So that small trace which is detected on the body of the assailant or on the victim or on the scene of crime helps in identifying the source from where it has been dropped here. So it helps in recognition of its evidence that what is it and then its association with that particular individual to which it belongs. So that can be a person or thing or place and it is the clue for the identity of that source. So trace is the material which is left over at the scene of crime or on the body of the victim and the assailant and it acts as an evidence and helps us in association or establishment of identity of the source to which it belongs. So this is the importance. That small tiny amount so uh, trace which is left at the scene of crime or which has been picked up from the body of the victim or the body of the assailant that helps us in identifying the source from which what is it it then from to whom it, it, it belongs. So what are various types of these trace evidences? The trace evidences may be in a stain form uh, or any other material and the origin of the stain may be either biological or non-biological. Non -biological. The biological stains or traces may be of human origin or of animal origin. And if they are not decomposed, they are extremely valuable for the identification of the source of origin. And the non-biological may be any material present at the scene of crime or it may have been left there by the assailant or by the victim. So there are two main types of trace evidences which help in identity, which I have discussed that is the biological evidence and the non-biological evidence. 
the sig significance of trace evidence what is the medical legal importance and what is the importance of this trace evidence like biological evidence if found the the origination may be from the human or the animal source and it include either various body fluids or body tissues the body fluids may be saliva blood or semen or other body fluids can also be found like cerebrospinal fluid urine the vomitus the stomach washing and any other excreta and these body fluids can be in the form of stains at the scene of crime or on the clothes or around the body orifices like urethra vagina or rectum now about the other biological material which can be found they are either the hair human hair the scrapings under the nails which came, which contain the epithelium of the skin either from the assailant or from the victim so the assailant will have the scraping of epithelium of the victim and victim will have the scraping under uh, epithelium of the assailant so these scraping from the nails contains the epithelium of the skin which can be either in the physical or in the sexual assault of the assailant or of the victim so the source of hair if found now we have to establish that it may be of animal origin or it may be of human origin and if human then it is either from the head from the bros or from the pubes similarly the non biological evidence they may be either the personal belongings or material from the environment the personal belongings can be the clothes the spectacles the wrist watch the wallet or any other uh, material like the id card the pen so anything the handkerchief which is left there and it belongs to some individual and similarly the material from the environment can be the fibers of the carpet the leaves grass seeds of the field soil or dirt from the road and the other articles which can be found are the like the bottles the glass the tablets the bullets or the pellets shells or the weapon of offense can be found there so the trace evidence is governed the most important which is the law or the principle that is low card exchange principle the low card exchange principle this was devised by sir edmund low card and he was from 1877 to 1966 and he introduced the use of trace evidence in personal identification edmund lockard in 1910 started one room laboratory and finally it grew up to a university department so he worked a lot on this trace evidence and on these principle so the low card exchange principle states that every contact leaves a trace and exchange of this trace is a two way process so i'll explain that whenever two individual like these two hands they come in contact with with each other they leave a trace the right hand will leave a trace on the left and left hand will leave a trace on the right similarly when two individuals they come in contact with each other they there is exchange of material from one to the other and similarly this exchange can be two way process to the uh, place that the scene of crime and from the scene of crime to both the assailant and the victim so this is the principle that every contact leaves a trace and this exchange of trace is a two way process so what is the medical legal importance of trace evidence this trace is first isolated identified 
and is compared with that source from where it is suspected and then it will confirm the identity that this particular trace belong to that particular individual. Now classical example of trace evidence are the sexual assault, the physical assault and hit and run road traffic accidents. In sexual assaults in which the transfer of biological material such as semen and blood occurs from assailant to the victim, from victim to the assailant and from assailant and victim both to the scene of crime and from the scene of crime to the victim and the assailant. Similarly, the non-biological material from the scene of crime to both the assailant and the victim can be transferred or is transferred. So this is two-way process from the locus or the scene of crime both to both the assailant and the victim and from victim to the scene of crime. Similarly, assailant to the victim and victim to the assailant, these are all two-way processes. So besides these trace evidence, the most common other method police which use that is the anthropometry and the dactylography. I'll be discussing these methods in the next up upcoming lecture and in the next lecture I will be discussing the uh, other aspects of the trace evidence. So thank you very much. Take care. Allah Hafiz. Please subscribe to my channel. And this is my channel name, Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokhar, Lectures on Forensic Medicine.